So we're going to talk today about fibromyalgia and autoimmunity. It's not something we haven't talked about before, but we really feel a refocus on it is necessary at this point in time. I'm Dr. Martin Rutherford, certified functional medicine practitioner, chiropractor. Do you think they care that I have a degree in English too? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe they do. I don't know. That's funny. <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, I have to say this every week. But yeah, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractor. We know that fibromyalgia is serious. We're not laughing at that. We've had people comment on that. Before. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been doing a series recently. What for yeah. the last three, four, five weeks? Five About weeks. Maybe. At least the last three. Last three to four. Yeah. Three to four weeks. We've been summarizing for those of you who do watch all the time. Um, we, uh, you know, we've been talking for a couple of years now. We have some 400 hours online about a large variety of chronic pain issues and, and, and their specific components and, and, and ways to address them. Uh, fibromyalgia is what we started out with, and it's interesting. It's not going away. I'm not sure if it's even growing, okay? And so uh, if you watch any of our videos, you will notice that thanks to the gentleman sitting next to me here, there are always a number of uh, peer-reviewed journal references attached showing that the research is moving in the direction that we've been talking about for quite some time. But we're trying to re-summarize this for the people who are still suffering from it because almost unbeknownst to me, which it doesn't seem possible, a lot of you are still being told that fibromyalgia doesn't have an autoimmune component to it. Um, I was just watching a, uh, uh, a video from a online, very famous uh, vitamin supplement, herbal botanical hawker, <laughs> I'll call him, I won't go by name, it's very famous, but he basically said, here's what your fibromyalgia is, and if you take my homeopathic, naturopathic remedies and my supplements and this, you'll start feeling better within 24 hours. He must not be dealing with the same patients that we're dealing with, I don't know. So, um, so we wanted to bring out what fibromyalgia was over the last couple of weeks. We've talked about the stress components. We've talked about the gut components. We talked about how peripheral neuropathy is a significant generator of fibromyalgia. We have talked about thyroid, Hashimoto's specifically. And these are the things, and relative to the stress components, we talked about childhood trauma. We talked about perfectionism. Um, and so these are the components of fibromyalgia. But the, but the, I think the most unique and, and I don't know, unique is the term, but I think the most consistent component is autoimmunity in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the last part to our summation or re-summation of updating the literature, updating the, of the research and updating what, what Dr. Gates uses, the data that he uses to address these fibromyalgia cases, which not to be self-promoting, we get pretty consistently successful results with meaning that you can't really cure a fibromyalgia patients because of what we're just about to talk about. Mm -hmm. But you can frequently kind of stop the progression, reverse it, usually substantially in, in most cases, and we get some pretty severe cases in here, and then have that patient have the tools to be able to maintain that, uh, that correction. So we talk from that perspective because in properly selected patients, I'm, I should mm -hmm. say that too, mm -hmm. because some patients just aren't able to do some of the things that, that they need to do. So this is the last piece to that puzzle. And we're gonna talk about autoimmunity and fibromyalgia. And was that the overview of what we've been talking about? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't yeah. even see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. that was that's funny, yeah. okay, perfect. Okay, so that's what we've been talking about. So now we're gonna talk about specific questions regarding autoimmunity and fibromyalgia. And I'm living in such a bubble here that I didn't even realize that autoimmunity hadn't like leapt to the top of the understanding mm -hmm. of, the, of fibromyalgia because because that's what we see every day. And I just assumed that that was becoming a well-known fact. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, it's not. Yeah, it's not, it's not. And so the question really comes, it becomes, <clears throat> where are these immune cells coming from? So we've done a number of other broadcasts on it, like you were saying on fibro recently, we did one on Hashimoto's thyroiditis. There is just this hugely growing association between autoimmune thyroid disease and fibromyalgia. I'm not gonna go into all that because we just did it a few weeks ago. For those of you watching, who've been watching, we don't want to belabor the point. But the simple point is that they did a study where they took a group of basically patients where their immune system is killing their thyroid and they may even have normal thyroid hormone blood tests. 
It's called U thyroid Hashimoto's thyroiditis. They found that 62% of these people with this autoimmunity to their thyroid have fibromyalgia. And this association between fibro and Hashimoto's has been talked about extensively. Then we did another broadcast on small fiber peripheral neuropathy. And that's where your pain nerves start to die and degenerate. And when they do that, for all intents and purposes, these pain nerves are like sparking. They're like fireworks. And so that sends a lot of pain back into the brain. And the research is suggesting that usually this is happening in fibromyalgia patients because of a quote unquote disimmune or autoimmune cause. Then we have the whole connection to gluten. So there's this whole concept called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. We'll look it up. You're going to see a lot of pros and cons for it. There are going to be some detractors, but non-celiac gluten sensitivity is real. That's why it's gained acceptance. And some of the studies on non-celiac gluten sensitivity have not found an association between gluten antibodies and this problem, but other studies have. And kind of like we talked about with the thyroid broadcast and fibromyalgia, it's all in how you interpret the labs and what labs do you have run. Because for example, we run a gluten test that has 20 different antibodies to the gluten molecule. And when we run that, we see a lot of associations between gluten reactions and people who have balance problems, people who have neuropathy, people who have fibromyalgia, individuals with autism. Whereas lots of times in research studies, they may only run two gluten antibodies tests to see if you have a problem. So it's just, I say this to illustrate the point that many of you may have not had thorough enough testing to really verify if you're having issues as it pertains to your fibromyalgia with your immune system. When you look at the totality of the research, it's almost irrefutable that the majority of fibromyalgia patients have some autoimmune problem. When you look at the statistics on gluten reactions, when you look at the stats on associations with thyroid autoimmunity, and then you look at the associations between peripheral neuropathy and fibromyalgia, all those have autoimmune reactions when you get to the core of the issue. And those autoimmune reactions are creating a lot of the symptoms that you're experiencing. Now, those autoimmune reactions are different from a rheumatoid arthritis patient or a lupus patient or a scleroderma patient which is why it's been so confusing for so many of you because when you go to your doctor and you're tested for rheumatoid arthritis, oh, you don't have it. You're checked for lupus, oh, you don't have it. But the, the devil's in the details, right? So when you go into the details of it, oh, you do have autoimmune reactions, but the pathology community hasn't necessarily put a name and what's going on with fibromyalgia patients with the exception of the gluten reactions and the Hashimoto's. So, and I may be wrong on this, but you're going into the area that I thought of or that, that I related to when you brought this topic up, which was Hashimoto's is usually the number one autoimmune mm -hmm. problem that we see. But when one autoimmune, you rarely get one right. autoimmune right. attack. You really rarely get an immune attack on one tissue. So the thing that brings it home to me, and for those of you who've never seen this before, I have fibromyalgia, okay. so. So the thing that brought it home to me was when it started becoming uh, in, obvious or apparent in the research that Hashimoto's can, it can be related to Meniere's disease. Right. So then you can get uh, ringing in the ears, deafness in the ears, and vertigo. It's then Hashimoto's is related to cerebellar antibodies. So now you lose your ability to walk, maybe some, maybe not that severe, maybe it's just dizziness, vertigo, balance, stiff necks, blurred vision. Then it can be relate, related to celiac disease. You didn't specifically, I don't think, mm, mentioned celiac. So celiac, which I also have, it can be <clears throat> specifically related to celiac. And it can be specifically related to pernicious anemia. So now you have a, a B12 deficiency and maybe autoimmune gastritis. So now maybe you got a gut problem. You, it can be related to polycystic ovarian syndrome, mm -hmm. and this, and there's and there's more, and there's more, yeah. And these, and this is all we know. I, I would I would extend that to the rheumatoid arthritis in the Lyme, and this is, I, I don't know if this is what you were saying, but so if you get an immune if you get an immune attack on your thyroid, it doesn't just attack the thyroid; it raises the antibody count in general, and then other tissues can start to get affected. So if you have rheumatoid arthritis, 
or you have a negative test that says you don't have rheumatoid arthritis, even though you do, because once sometimes you've experienced this, sometimes the test is normal and, and you're, then you're sitting there with all this redness in your joints and stuff like that. Then what will happen is, let's say you had all of those, just out of, mm -hmm. just for example, just for a, a, a purpose of an, of an example, you would get the attack on your thyroid in theory. And then many of those would flare up at the same time. Mm -hmm. And now you would have symptoms of celiac. You had symptoms of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. You would have symptoms of pernicious anemia. Mm -hmm. You would have symptoms of an immune attack against your, against your cerebellum. Mm -hmm. And now you walk into the doctor's office right. and, right. and that, that, uh, that paragraph of, of, of symptoms. Of chief that, complaints. Of and chief your complaints doctor just kinda, that, that the eyes doctor's eyes kind of glaze over. And in our world, as soon as we start to hear that okay. paragraph evolve in the mm -hmm. history, we go, this person's got an autoimmune problem. Because there's nothing else that can do that. Right. There's nothing. Is that? That's exactly it. Because it's not a singular issue. And I'll just go on further. So those immune cells of the thyroid, we know that they can attack antigens in the brain. Or lobe. They can attack your frontal lobes. They can decrease blood flow to the frontal lobes, basically. They can. Related to migraines. Yeah, and so there's depression and migraines. migraines, absolutely, with depression. It just goes, infertility, <laughs> goes it on. just goes on and on and on. And really the question is, it's interesting because when we're evaluating a patient, we have to look at them diagnostically. Okay, so what is the medical diagnosis for you? What are the diagnostic components? And then you look at that in view of what's going on with our society relative to like fibromyalgia patients. How did things get so bad? How did the wheels fall off the bus so bad? to where we're developing all these symptoms, like you're saying, from depression to dizziness, to pain, to fatigue, to menstrual irregularities. And it all boils down to these immune cells attacking the individual's body, but so many of you have not been told that you have autoimmunity. And to take it one step further, these immune cells are pretty much forming, in our opinion and the research, because of chronic stress responses, breaking down the gastrointestinal tract, and then also the foods that we're eating, which changed the gut microbial architecture, and then also food reactions themselves can be pretty harmful to the intestines as well. So that's what we're finding. And then once that happens, all bets are off and viruses start living in the thyroid, maybe in other areas of your body, breaking down your mitochondria so you can't make energy. It just goes on and on. But that's the deeper surface level of really what's going on with our chronic pain population Aside from you know somebody who hurts their back, we're not talking about them, but somebody like you who has this chronic pain that's just unrelenting and not going away. Yeah, this subject that we can go on for a long time. We could. I'm so. just, I mean, you know, I was just going to go like they're now saying rheumatoid arthritis comes from bacteria in the gut. Right. They're now saying we know lupus or not lupus, Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll go off the off the off the tracks here. They're now finding is an autoimmune disease that starts out by attacking an enzyme in your in your joints. Uh, that, uh, but related to uh, the Lyme bacteria. But for the most part, they're saying, I, I, I read an article, mm -hmm. I read an article mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago that suggested that they're starting to believe that all autoimmunity is coming from the gut, mm -hmm. from the gut. And they're saying MS, leaky gut, mm -hmm. virus. Um, so this is the key. This is a, this is the major key. Now what Dr. Gates just said is the major key as to how that develops and relative to the stress responses hitting the gut and so on and so forth. But this is, this is where it's at. And this is why you're not getting help. My mentor many, many, many years ago said it's autoimmune and it's autoimmunity and it's everywhere. I could not grasp that. I could not get my head around it. I had it. He diagnosed me. He, the the him and, the, and another gentleman that I was working with and uh, and and yet I still could not grasp that it was this um, widespread the autoimmunity being the, the this that it was this widespread and 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 it is spreading like wildfire and and so mm -hmm. um, and and if you have a hard time grasping that I understand that because I was there at one point in time. But we rarely ever, I don't, I don't remember. I think Dr. Gates says maybe there was somebody, but I, I don't remember anybody coming in here with fibromyalgia. And we've probably done a couple thousand cases at this point in time um, that has not had an autoimmune problem. Right. When you actually really look at it, when you look at how to interpret the blood tests 
and just even the blood tests that we could run that we oftentimes don't run to spare a patient cost. I mean, you can run $5,000 in blood tests very easily just to show a patient, oh, here you go, here's the autoimmune problem. But you can see it in other factors associated with the lab. So, so I think that pretty well summarizes it. Uh, we hope this was helpful for a lot of you who are out there struggling for answers relative to fibromyalgia. We're desiring to show you the credibility behind your illness. It's not just bringing credibility or making up credibility. The credibility is there. You just need to be aware of the current literature as to why you feel this way. So our uh, webinar should be out soon. We finished filming last week. It's in editing and um, probably in the next couple of weeks. So we hope you found this helpful and we'll see you soon.